and welcome to Precision Study. Today I want to walk through an interesting problem I encountered and how you can use really simple math to move quickly on a large structural problem where you might otherwise be tempted to do some really detailed analysis or FEA and really you just want to get to something that is good enough pretty quickly. And so the problem example is building a rail launcher. And so someone at work wanted to uh, throw some stuff and they need a really long rail to do it. So there's a rail and then there's a carriage and they throw some stuff. But uh, this, this rail ended up being about 50 meters long. And that's when I realized, oh, this is actually a, uh, an interesting kind of civil engineering problem of how to make a large freestanding structure. How do you do it cheaply? How do you do it quickly? How do you do it safely? And this is a you know, easy thing to analyze. If, if you want to get the exact answer, it just takes a lot of time. And you might be tempted to kind of go early into FEA or kind of really advanced analysis. But there's some really fast beam bending you can do to tell you the rough sizing of the structure. And it will be conservative and um, overbuilt, but it's also quite easy and fast. So the, the first thing is, how are you actually going to support this? So one, one bad idea includes, let's just have it sticking out of the ground and we have a huge mass down here. The problem is the, the weight of the carriage, um, or the weight of the whole rail is trying to tilt this thing over, which means you end up with these huge reaction loads kind of up and down into the ground to balance it out. And you're going to buy like 10 or 20 times as much mass in reaction weight as you do in rail. So this is, you know, very expensive, not recommended. Uh, next bad idea includes what if we have the rail, it has one support at the base, and then we build a tower at the other end. And this is okay. This is, this is better because now we're just carrying uh, the mass of the rail instead of this mass of torque. However, we have a really long unsupported distance. We're going to get a lot of stress and a lot of deflection in the rail, which is going to drive up rail sizing. So something we can do that's a little bit better than this is we can have the rail and we can put a tower at like the two thirds point. And what that ends up doing is you get some amount of deflection here, goes back up and back down again. And you can work out that this is two thirds is almost the point where you get equal stress kind of there and there and almost equal deflection. It's not like the perfect kind of airy point, but it's uh, it's close enough so we can analyze it. Normally what I'd say is you would start with this as a beam, you'd figure out reaction forces, you'd do a shear and moment diagram, you'd figure out the actual deflection equations, and then you'd go solve that. And you can do it, it takes maybe an hour or two of math, and you'll, you'll chug through it, you might make a mistake though. It turns out there's some really easy ways to solve this problem that are approximate and conservative. So what I can do is first say, look, this rail is eventually going to be flat on the ground and raised up, and the bending loads are going to be worse when it's flat on the ground. So already I'm going to assume it's a beam that's flat. And then I'm going to show the two kind of simply supported points, one at zero, one at two thirds L. I'm going to call this length A and this length B. And what I can do is I can chop this up into two beams that I know how to analyze really easily and just look it up in a handbook. So I'm going to say this looks a lot like a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load. And then this looks a lot like a cantilevered beam with a uniformly distributed load. And uh, these answers are actually conservative. Like the, the stress for this is correct. The stress for this is actually a little bit high by like maybe one and a half X over the actual solution. And the deflections are also conservative because you know, if you have this object uh, bend down, but then you put this piece at the end, it creates a torque that actually kind of forces it back up. So these, um, these equations are gonna be conservative. So what we can do is we can look up in the handbook, I used um, Precision Point by JPE. They have a lot of their beam bending equations on the first few pages, and they describe these two situations. I also like Rourke's. You can find all this stuff online, though. So we consider simply supported uh, distributed load. And what we find is the peak moment is in the middle. And the value is mgl over 8, where in this case, l equals a, because our length a is uh, 2 thirds l. Okay? And then uh, the deflection, peak deflection, is also in the middle. And that is equal to uh, 5 over 384 times mgl cubed over ei. And then the actual stress, peak stress and bending, is my over i, 
where we use the moment and then we use values of the cross section. And if then you look on the cantilevered side, um, in that case, the deflection looks something like this. And this is simply, this is a distributed load as well. The maximum moment is at the root and equals mg l over two, where l is b, because b is one third l. And then the deflection is one eighth mg l cubed over bi. Again, substituting b in for l, stress still equals my over i. And then what you can do is you can imagine any cross section you want, plug in all the numbers and find the answer. I chose, you know, thin wall tube, and I know like, you know, the area is pi, you know, r outer squared minus r inner squared. I know that the um, y is the distance to the edge of the neutral, from neutral axis to fiber is just r outer, sorry. And then i is pi by four, r outer to the fourth minus r inner to the fourth. And you can make a really quick spreadsheet and you can type in your dimensions, like choose a diameter, choose a thickness, calculate the radii, calculate the area, calculate the, um, the y and the i. I assume steel, so I said, you know, rho equals 7860, that's my density. And the modulus is 200 E9 pascals. And you can figure out, well, if I have this much cross-sectional area and that much density and this much length, here's the mass of the beam in this area. Therefore, I know my, my weights, I know my moments, I know my deflections. And I made a really quick little spreadsheet in about five minutes and I figured that a 20 inch OD pipe, that is one inch wall thickness, would actually be able to span these lengths with uh, deflections on the order of maybe uh, 0.2 meters. Um, and I figured that was, that was efficient. Um, I originally wanted to ballpark it as like, you know, maximum deflection, you know, deflection is about length over a hundred. So if it's a 50 meter long rail, maybe I only want half meter deflections. And I also worked out that it had maybe a factor of safety of like three or four on stress. So really quick way to take what looks like a hard problem, chop it up in some simple stuff, figure out a cross section and get going. And now I already know this is like a 13 ton structure. If you're buying large amounts of steel, it's maybe, you know, $500 a ton, which is about a dollar a pound. I mean, sometimes that price changes. So there's probably, um, you know, six or seven grand of steel to be bought. And then when you consider inspection, fabrication, shipping, maybe it ends up like 10, 10 times that much. So maybe it's like a sixty, seventy thousand dollar rail. And you know, then you can get into the tower design and the lifting and everything else. But it kind of gives you a ballpark intuition for the structure and how it behaves. Thank you.